the SHIFT project was aimed to, um, to see how genome editing could uh, be of benefit to consumers in, in, in a small crop. Uh, and for that we choose chicory, which is a relatively small crop, and with small I mean grown on a little, little areas. I think it would be very nice to have a follow-up project. Um, obviously, the, the Cheek project has, has generated a lot of material in terms of mutants and knowledge, uh, which I think deserves a follow-up. From our side, from the assessment, so the socio-economic assessment side and the environmental assessment side, it would be quite nice to also um, apply this methodology on other plants or other crops they are applying uh, the new plant breeding technologies. And on the other hand, related to really uh, cheek results, I, I would like to see that, that the exciting results would be uh, really taking forward with some kind of uh, uh, project or commission uh, from the industrial side, so that we could really see one day that the kind of uh, applications uh, uh, coming out, uh, out from this research. That these sesquiterpilactones also play an important role in the protection of the plants against um, pathogens or herbivores. Um, so that's one area where there's potential for follow-up. Uh, and the other, which is also because the developments are still not uh, mature, again, it's in the area of um, um, producing specific sesquiterpene lactones from the pathway, uh, because there are still areas of this biosynthetic pathway which we do not understand. And so the more we understand about it and also the development of these structures where the compounds accumulate uh, is uh, so uh, using this or uh, deepening our no knowledge in this area can help us um, yeah, producing those compounds more efficiently. And I can imagine that um, many of the partners will continue in the future in additional projects if the funding will be available, um, especially on editing different astrocene crops and also in the assessment of the societal and, um, and life cycle analysis, for example. But I would see that there were also other very, very um, high potential uh, uh, bioactivities like, like uh, anti-inflammatory activities, for example. And, and, and uh, so I would see that, that uh, kind of under umbrella of different bioactivities, we would, uh, we would need uh, more kind of um, proof and safety uh, evaluation in order to proceed to the uh, applications. Um, it would be very valuable to uh, continue um, investigating these um, um, activities, um, these, uh, what, what is happening in the various countries in, in terms of uh, social acceptability, in terms of, for example, uh, stakeholder initiatives in terms of policy initiatives, how uh, consumers and broader publics are uh, responding uh, to that um, initiatives. Um, it would be very valuable um, to uh, continue uh, um, in investigating it, to continue investigating it in a comparative way so that we have all these different um, experiences can compare it and can try to draw some general um, uh, lessons from that. Yes, I fully agree. The um, political debate will be ongoing for some time, even after the end of the SHIP project. But what certainly will be an interesting um, uh, thing to observe for social scientists or for science that uh, society researchers uh, is that um, the SHIP project will perhaps become a factor uh, uh, in these debates. Um, um, 
so the impact of the Chic project will only can only be observed after after its end, and this would um, this would be something that I would be very interested um, to follow. Uh, who's taking up which aspect of the results, and so on and so forth. Um, it might be a point in time where the there's a transition uh, in um, considering these plants not as a risk topic, but as something that um, might provide us with opportunities uh, and, uh, that we might need in the future. I hope that there could be a sort of follow-up project of our chic project. Um, the, the, um, I think it could be on using these new plant breeding techniques and especially when we look at chicory, it really works very good, better than many other crops that we worked on before. So either chicory could still be, um, let's say, a model plant to use in, in follow-up uh, projects, but also to continue doing the research on these new plant breeding techniques that are so fast and really very good for society because you do not need a lot of time to very targeted come to a specific goal that you want to reach. So I think this is something that we need for the upcoming problem of trying to feed the growing world population, having more sustainable agriculture. So I think we should be able to use this technique and maybe a follow-up project could again focus on using these new plant breeding techniques. But there are already uh, yeah, collaborations going on, or discussions going on, to, to get that to a further stage. Could we have fields with this type of chicory on the field to see how it really reacts to environment, how it really reacts to uh, other to, to stress conditions. Uh, another thing is that very, uh, a very tangible result is that one of the partners came to us, hey, can we collaborate with your breeders to, and what, uh, to see if we can do it. We now know how this chicory does this. Can we now, uh, with your breeders, uh, discuss how to do this with traditional techniques? So she was directed to bring uh, health traits, health to the consumer. But I think there are also other uh, important uh, societal problems to, to tackle, like uh, climate change or uh, food, food security. So I think a follow-up project of SHIC could be uh, taking the template that SHIC has used, uh, integrating uh, science, uh, stakeholder involvement and communications for uh, crops that are relevant for those uh, issues, uh, climate change and uh, food security, for example. Thank you.